It's the magical glowing box that brings the world into our living rooms. Of course, it's not really a box anymore. It's flat, so it's more of like a haunted picture frame. And they're everywhere now, not just in our living room. So that's anachronistic as well. You know what? Whatever. Doesn't matter. Here are five entrancing things about the invention of television. Number one, its roots reach back to the 19th century. When we speak casually about television, we're usually referring to electronic television, which was mostly developed in the 1920s and 30s. I'll get to that in a minute. But before electronic television came along, there was mechanical television. The essential concepts of mechanical television were introduced in the 1850s, when the process of image scanning was invented for the first printing telegraphs, the forerunners of fax machines. In 1884, Paul Nipko, then a student at the University of Berlin, invented the Nipko disk, which became the basis for the line-by-line -line scanning mechanisms used in mechanical television transmitters and receivers. Mechanical television was refined through the first few decades of the 20th century, but the first public demonstration of moving images on a mechanical television didn't occur until the mid-1920s. By then, something even more exciting was on the horizon. And, number two, a key component was invented by a teenager. Television as we have it today is the product of years of research and development by many, many different people. So why is it that it's usually just one guy who gets most of the credit? Well, that one guy who gets most of the credit is Philo Farnsworth, and while I think it's reductive to say he and he alone invented television, he did invent an essential component of early electronic television, and he came up with the idea when he was just 14. Farnsworth was born in Utah in 1906, where his family lived in a log cabin built by his grandfather. When Farnsworth was 12, they moved to an Idaho ranch. Their new house was wired for electricity, which inspired young Farnsworth's lifelong fascination with electronics. In 1921, at age 14, Farnsworth conceived of a device which would eventually be called the image dissector. He built and demonstrated a functioning image dissector in 1927, the first video camera tube. Farnsworth's image dissector was crude by today's standards, and it was superseded just a few years later by a similar but superior device invented by Vladimir Zworykin called the Iconoscope. But it was arguably the most important breakthrough in the early development of electronic television. Farnsworth eventually manufactured and sold one of the first commercially available television transmitter and receiver systems. He continued working on television for the rest of his life, though he also dabbled in nuclear fusion in the 1960s, just a fun side project, and held perhaps as many as 300 patents by the time he died in 1971. So like I said, Farnsworth was crucial, but he was not the only important actor in the drama that was the invention of television. There were others, which is one reason why, number three, it was the object of intense competition. In the 1920s and 30s, Philo Farnsworth and Vladimir Zworykin were working on similar projects at the same time. And on top of that, there were major corporations who were becoming extremely invested in the results. While Farnsworth carried out his research independently, Zwarikin went to work for RCA, the leading manufacturer of radios in the US at the time. In 1931, frustrated by Zwarikin's slower than expected progress, RCA offered to buy Farnsworth's patents. Farnsworth declined and went to work for RCA's rival company, Philco. RCA sued Farnsworth for patent interference, arguing that Zwarikin's television system first submitted for a patent in 1923 had come first. The legal battles between RCA and Farnsworth were finally settled in 1939 after Farnsworth, with the help of his high school science teacher, was able to prove that his concept of the image dissector tube predated the inventions of Zwarikin. RCA came to a licensing agreement with Farnsworth that allowed them to begin producing commercially available television receivers. 
Experimental broadcasts began that same year. After the end of World War II in 1945, people began buying TV sets and the world has not been the same since. But all that research and development resulted in more than just the television. Number four, it yielded a wide variety of applications. As with other revolutionary technologies throughout history, the invention of television led to the invention of lots of other cool stuff. For instance, video camera tubes like Farnsworth's image dissector and Zworykin's iconoscope led to the development of the first electron microscopes. A picture tube invented by Farnsworth in an attempt to improve on his image dissector was also incorporated into radar systems. The invention of the video camera, essential to television systems, also allowed for the development of endoscopy, which provides doctors with a non-surgical means of looking inside the body, and the photomultiplier, developed by Zwarikin and other RCA researchers, has found a multitude of applications in science and medicine, including spectroscopy, night vision, medical imaging, and blood analysis. But of course, the main reason why we regard the invention of television as important is, number five, it changed entertainment and mass communication forever. Many of us regard radio and television as belonging to two separate eras, but the earliest electronic televisions were demonstrated just seven years after the first commercially licensed radio stations went on the air. Radio was destined to be supplanted by television almost from the very beginning. And when TV took over as the dominant medium of mass communication in the 1950s, it changed everything. Important figures in politics, sports, and current events were no longer disembodied voices on the radio or grainy photographs on the newspaper page. They were living, moving images on a screen right in your home baseball games, presidential debates, even combat from war zones could be witnessed as they happened from your couch. We take it for granted since we can do all of those things and more on devices we carry around in our pockets, but try to imagine how transformative it was to go from a world without television to a world with television in the span of just a few years. Virtually overnight, the world became smaller and closer than it had ever been before. And for better and for worse, that's the world we have all lived in ever since. The hardest part is picking only five. Catch you next time. Hey folks, hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives to become a patron. Thanks for watching.